Christ in his ways. Good morning. We shall read the entrance antiphon for the Mass today. O God, come to my assistance. O Lord, make haste to help me. You are my rescuer, my help. O Lord, do not delay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Let's ask God to forgive our sins, that we might be worthy to celebrate this Holy Eucharist. I confess, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most gravest fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as the creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from Jeremiah. In the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fifth month of the fourth year, the prophet Hananiah, son of Azar from Gibeon, said to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people, Thus says the Lord of all hosts, the God of Israel, I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two years, I will restore to this place all the vessels of the temple of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place to Babylon. And I will bring back to this place Jeconiah, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and all the exiles of Judah who went to Babylon, says the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. The prophet Jeremiah answered the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people assembled in the house of the Lord, and said, Amen. Thus may the Lord do. May he fulfill the things you prophesied by bringing the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles back from Babylon to this place. But now listen to what I'm about to state in your hearing and the hearing of all the people from of old. The prophets who were before you and me prophesied war, woe, and pestilence against many lands and mighty kingdoms. But the prophet who prophesies peace is recognized as truly sent by the Lord only when his prophetic prediction is fulfilled. Thereupon, 
the prophet Hananiah took the yoke from the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it and said in the presence of all the people, thus says the Lord, even so within two years, I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon from off the neck of all the nations. At that, the prophet Jeremiah went away. Some time after the prophet Hananiah had broken the yoke from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Go tell Hananiah this, thus says the Lord, by breaking a wooden yoke, you forge an iron yoke. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, a yoke of iron I will place on the necks of all these nations serving Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him, even the beasts of the field I give him. To the prophet Hananiah, the prophet Jeremiah said, hear this, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, and you have raised false confidence in this people. For this, says the Lord, I will dispatch you from the face of the earth. This very year you shall die, because you have preached rebellion against the Lord. That same year, in the seventh month, Hananiah the prophet died. The word of the Lord. Lord, teach me your statutes. Lord, teach me your statutes. Remove from me the way of falsehood and favor me with your law. Lord, teach me your statutes. Take not the word of truth from my mouth for in your ordinances is my hope. Lord, teach me your statutes. Let those turn to me who fear you and acknowledge your decrees. Lord, teach me your statutes. Let my heart be perfect in your statutes, that I may not be put to shame. Lord, teach me your statutes. Sinners wait to destroy me, but I pay heed to your decrees. Lord, teach me your statutes. From your ordinances I turn not away, for you have instructed me. Lord, teach me your statutes. Alleluia, alleluia. <clears throat> Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and preceded him to the other side of the sea, while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came towards them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. 
At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Were you of little faith? Why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. After making the crossing, they came to land at Gennesareth, where the men of that place recognized him. They sent word to all surrounding country. People, people brought to him all those who were sick and begged him that they might touch only the tassel of his clock, and as many as touch, it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. We have heard this Bible passage many times as we read the Gospel readings and even in the Mass. When we are in fear, when we are confused, when we are overwhelmed with the other things, we will not be able to see Jesus in life because our focus is not on God, but something else that happens in us or around us. It could be inside. Sometimes people will be looking at you, still they won't recognize you because their mind is thinking something else. Their mind is not there, but somewhere else. We can be seated in the church, but do not know what is happening in the church because you are so engrossed, so overwhelmed with the things in you or sometimes around you. That's what happened. When Jesus was walking on the water, the apostles were so busy or so frightened looking at the huge waves that were around the boat. They were frightened and they could not see Jesus. Another example we can see in the Gospel readings is this. When Jesus died, when he was buried, two disciples were going to Emmaus and Jesus was walking with them. They did not recognize him because they were so busy overwhelmed, thinking about what happened on the cross and how Jesus was buried. They did not see Jesus walking with him. That would happen to us any time in our life. If you're so overwhelmed and so busy thinking about ourselves, our problems, or the situations around what's happening in our country, we have no time for God. We don't recognize God. But when Jesus said, do not be afraid, it is me, it is I, they saw Jesus. The same thing happened to two disciples who went to Emmaus. When he broke the bread, they recognized Jesus. Sometimes Jesus reveals himself so strongly to us where we can see him or where we are supposed to see him. And Peter says, Master, if it is you, allow me to walk on the water. Is it possible for any human being to walk on the water? It's an impossible task. But Peter asks this to Jesus. If it is you, allow me to walk as you walk on the water. And Jesus says, walk, a simple word, come. Do you want to walk as I walk on the water? Come, just trust me. The faith of Peter, though sometimes he, he's, he takes a hasty decisions, this time he took the right decision. 
He took the first step from the boat and put it on the water. How strange and how confusing that would be. A man getting into from the boat and trying to walk on water, which Peter might have never heard it before in his life. That is faith, dear brothers and sisters. Oftentimes, our faith is shallow. There's a short story. In a village, they were not having rain for a long, long time. And the priest said, tomorrow we shall have a special prayer for rain. And our God, who loves us, will give us rain. Let's all come to pray tomorrow afternoon in faith that God will give us rain. There were hundreds of people gathered, but there was only one little guy, little boy, who had an umbrella with him. How often we do that? We pray, but we don't believe. We think we believe. And this is the only boy, only boy who had a strong faith. If I'm going to pray for rain, my God will give rain. I need an umbrella. That is faith, dear brothers and sisters. That's a faith Peter had. Come. He's trying to do the impossible, trying to walk on water. Everything is possible for the one who has faith. And we know what happened. As soon as Peter, instead of focusing his eyes on Jesus, his eyes were focused on the huge wave, a big wave that is coming, and started to sink. That's what, that's what happens in our life. As long as we are focused, look at Jesus, everything will go safe. Oftentimes, we, our focus shifts. We started looking at the other things, and we started to sing. And Jesus says, you man of little faith, why do you doubt? Today, dear brothers and sisters, let's ask Jesus to have faith, a strong and true faith, not shallow faith, like the, like the faith of the boy who came to pray for rain, and he came with umbrella, like the Peter, Peter's faith, who was ready to walk on the water because Jesus has commanded so. Let's ask Jesus to increase our faith in him. Let's all stand and pray for our needs. For our church, may the Lord raise up holy men and women to humbly labor on her behalf. We pray to the Lord. For government leaders, may our God of justice guide them in working for the common good. We pray to the Lord. For those who are lowly and homebound, may Jesus' healing and consoling hand be upon them. We pray to the Lord. For this faith community, may God's word continue to guide us in truth and love. We pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed, may the Lord welcome them into the fullness of the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. And for what else shall we pray now? Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For my sister in Houston, who's in ICU with COVID, and for all those suffering from this horrible virus, that cures will be found quickly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We shall pray for Sharon Sliger, for whose intention this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. 
Let us pray. Merciful Father, grant to us that which we have presented to you according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord our God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of his spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right. right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph as spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co haste eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let's pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, and behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable now to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
communion antiphon, the second one. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will no longer hunger. Whoever believes in me will not thirst. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts and your never-failing care for them. Make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. We shall go in peace. And now we shall pray. Pray to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of soul. Amen. To our God, who alone Many of the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. <laughs> 